YouTube, Rook here from Rook Geek Goodness, my little channel on the interweb for all things geeky and cool, and happy holidays to all my viewers and subscribers. This video is going to be something completely different I have not yet done. I was going to do one last year, but I was so green to YouTube, meaning I was very, very new of how the whole process of YouTube works, how to edit videos, those sort of things, that I didn't do this type of video. I'm going to be doing my personal top 10 list of my collectibles in my personal collection for 2017. This list consists of the best of the best out of my personal collection. I thought, you know what, this would be the perfect time of year to do it because everybody does top 10 lists. This video is going to run a bit long, guys, so everybody know that now. Sit back and enjoy my top 10 list for my collectibles and my collection for 2017. So in a number 10 position, to make this list, I was trying to get, like I said, the best of the best. And I think this item fits the list in the number 10 slot only because I was trying to ramp up my Funko collection in 2015. I was buying tons of Funko products and this this was the hot item for San Diego Comic Con of 2015. That consists of the crystal blue Heisenberg from Breaking Bad. He's an extremely expensive pop now, hard to track down, hard to find. There were quality control issues from what I've heard with these particular pops because of that crystal material they used. It had a tendency to crack. And I know a lot of people who got these particular pops had it cracking along the back of the actual hat of the actual crystal blue Heisenberg. It's a really good pop. I highly suggest it if you can find it. The problem with this guy, he's extremely expensive, and that's why he's in the number 10 position on my list. He's a great pop, I'd highly suggest if you can get him, but the price is a bit steep. In the number 9 position, I went with an action figure. I went with something old and something new. And the reason why I did this is because I'm a big fan of the Star Wars Black series. And when I was starting to get into the Star Wars Black series, they had some original design uh, packaging, and they have later changed it because of the Star Wars Black series. When Hasbro decided to consolidate everything underneath the Black series, they changed the packaging. So what I had a sort of tie. I could break this tiebreaker for number 9. Again, this is the best of the best out of my collection. I went with two Black Series figures. We're looking at Boba Fett, which I've never did a video for, and I'm not going to, and I'll tell you the reason why, and Ahsoka Tano. She was a newer design. I'll kind of spray some out a little bit so you can see. First, Boba Fett. I was a big fan of the original trilogy of Star Wars, and I loved Boba Fett. He always had that iconic look. He looks really, really cool. And I said, you know what, Rook? He needs to be on your top 10 list. This guy is extremely expensive now. He's hard to come by. And to make this on this list, it's not just necessarily price. It's nostalgia. It's something that's close and dear to my heart. That's why things made this list. And this is why Bubba Fett made the cut, because he just looks really, really good. I love the packaging. I love the design of the old school Star Wars Black series, but this guy is not going to come out of packaging, and I'm not going to review him. He has a price point now, from what I've seen, anywhere from $80 to $100 on Amazon and on eBay. He's extremely expensive and hard to come by, and I like the presentation of Bubba Fett. Now let's look at Ahsoka Tano. She's a newer figure from the Black Series. This is when I did the consolidation and changed the packaging to all look like the Ahsoka Tano figure. And I thought, you know what? Ahsoka Tano has such a prominent role in the Clone Wars cartoon and in the Rebels TV show that I thought she's such a dynamite and creative character new to the actual trilogy from canon, but she is such a cool character. I did a review of Ahsoka Tano and I'll put it in the description box below, as well as the number 10 item, which was the Crystal Blue Heisenberg. He'll be in the description box as well. But I highly recommend both both these items, you can, if you can actually find them. The Boba Fett here may be hard to track down. Again, he has a very, very high price point. And Ahsoka Tano, just, she's such a cool and creative character, she had to make the list at number nine. All right, guys, in the number eight position is another Funko product, probably from one of the bigger franchises in the last, I would say, last five to six years, probably a little longer than that. But it goes to the New York Comic Con 2015 release for the Iron Throne. This thing is a dynamite collectible. Really cool Funko product. Had to make the list. Again, this is the best of the best out of my collection. Really cool item. Has this sort of gunmetal appearance to it. I'll put pictures up so you can kind of see what it look like out of packaging. Um, I have not yet done a review of the Iron Throne. It's really, really cool looking and it has it gives the appearance of having the weapons that are how the actual iron throne is created in the actual book and on the hbo show they're actually swords that are created to make the iron throne from game of thrones and it looks really really cool the kind of multi-purpose funko item where you can actually put a pop on it to actually appear like he's actually sitting on the iron throne i've actually did this in some of my other uh, backdrops of my videos you might have saw it in the past some of the older videos where i had like daenerys sitting on the actual iron throne or john uh, john snow so it's really really cool. It's multifunctional. I think it's a really dynamite piece. I highly recommend this for your collection. Again, price point is a bit steep. Again, that's not why it really made the list because it looks really, really cool. It's such a 
dynamite piece that actually stands out on a shelf. So if you actually put it on your shelf out of packaging, it really draws attention to it. And that's another reason why the Iron Throne is in number eight position on this list. Number seven position, I went back to another action figure. This particular piece was actually done as a Kickstarter designed by the Four Horsemen Studios. I've done not one, but two videos based on this particular figure. Again, I'll put it in the description box of this video if you want to check it out. It has to go to, it's such a good piece, it's the Gothatropolis Raven figure. This was done by the Four Horsemen Studios because of the Gothatropolis line, which has since now kind of merged and molded into something called the Mystic Legions. They made dozens of birds for their Kickstarter project. Program. This thing is such a dynamite piece, it actually showcases on a shelf. It catches attention. Everyone I've shown this particular action figure to has been flabbergasted between the, the paint, the detail, the sculpting, the articulation. This figure has it all, and it's not a cheap figure. Again, price out the door, so to speak. It's not the reason why it's on this list. It's on this list because of the value, the aesthetics, what it brings to the table. To me, it's a really, really cool action figure. That's something not on the beaten path. It's something you don't normally see. It's not a Hasbro product. It's not a Mattel product. It's something completely different. And you guys know, you, if you know my videos well enough by now, you know I love different things. And this thing right here, the Gothatropolis Raven, is a highlight to any collection. I highly recommend it at the number seven position. All right, guys, so the number six position, I went with a statue, a very near and dear statue to my heart. Back in 2016, I wasn't really sure the direction the channel was going to go to. And I, to do statues, it was on really on the low portion of the totem pole as far as reviews. But I really, really liked this statue. And it was, again, my very first statue I did on my channel. So I went back with... Blees. That's right, from the Red Lantern Corps for the DC Cover Girls line, the Blees statue. Now, this has a price point of about $100, and it's on this list because it is the best of the best when it comes to statues. The price was about $100 US, as I just said, but the price not alone is what I put it on this list. It's very, very important to me. It's a really cool statue. You don't really see, one, a lot of female statues in this day and age, and more importantly, you don't see them dressed in some type of lantern uh, outfits here, which you guys know I'm a big Green Lantern fan. She's part of the Red Lantern Corps, as you can see here. She is a dynamite collectible. Again, she's just a staction piece. She's just a statue. She does not have any articulation. There's no parts that can be swapped in and out, but there is, like as you saw, the wing shake there. These wings are extremely delicate. Um, that's the only negative I would have with this statue. She does plug in at the bottom here. There's a little silver point here. This little red base is crystal base here. You simply plug it into the base. It's one stop shop. You just clip one and done. It's very, very easy to attach to this statue. Has a very, very small footprint, small form factor. Sticks on a shelf really, really nicely. I think it's a great, great statue. It actually did a full video on this. It will be in the description box of this video, which will point to this statue here. If you want to see what the actual box would look like, it would look like this. I actually go down into more detail with this actual packaging and this full video of the Blee statue. And in number five position, I go back to a Funko item, an item I've talked about in many, many videos. I always talk about value. I talk about this in several videos, actually, that this item actually has so much value. I always recommend it, and that's why it makes this list the best of the best for 2017. It is, of course, the Wonder Woman and her invisible jet. I've talked about it in many, many videos why I actually really like this pop right, and it's a good end entry point into Funko, and more importantly, if you wanted to get a lot of bang for your buck, if you want to get a lot of value, this is the item to go to. I mentioned it when I was doing uh, some of my other videos, pretty recently actually, that her price point isn't that bad. You're getting a large pop ride. We're talking at least a foot here in this direction, and about a foot in the wings as well, for, and, and of course the Wonder Woman itself, for about $25 to $28 US. You can't find that value in this day and age for both a ride and a pop. If you wanted to know, Wonder Woman does, uh, she does have some articulation. Her head is kind of hindered a little bit because of the amount of hair sculpt she has, but this is the old school Wonder Woman design we've seen from years and years ago. I highly recommend this Wonder Woman if you can find it. Um, if you find one that has double foot pegs, meaning if you have double pegs in the actual feet here, let's kind of peg it in position, there we go, then anybody can actually sit in this invisible jet. So you can actually put other figures in here if you wanted to, if you wanted to role play something with, you know, if you're a young kid, you wanted to do something like that, as long as you had the two foot pegs in the bottom here, you can actually swap that figure in for Wonder Woman. These wings, it only comes in basically, uh, comes in four parts, basically. The wings detach and the stand detaches from the bottom. The box itself is about this big. It is a rather, rather large box, but I highly recommend this item. The only downside to this item at all is the sheer size. You need a lot of space to display this item, but besides that, I highly recommend the Wonder Woman and her visible jet at the number five position. 
And at the four position, I have to go back to another action figure. This is a high end, high price point figure. And again, this is not the reason why it actually made the cut for this list. It made the cut for the list because I'm a big Power Rangers fan and I had to go with it. It's the SH Arts Green Ranger figure. This is the pinnacle of action figure designed and implementation. This is the perfect Green Ranger figure in my personal opinion. It's better than any other Green, figure, Green Ranger figure on the market. Highly recommend this. You have multiple hands. You have multiple positions you can use. It comes with a really detailed dragon dagger, which you don't normally see. And of course, he has an item that only showcased in maybe one, maybe two episodes of Power Rangers. It's the Sword of Darkness. I'll kind of show the packaging so you can see what it looks like. This thing is so hard to get now, guys. I don't recommend trying to find it. You're looking at anywhere from $100 to $150 US for this. It is extremely pricey, but in my opinion, he is probably one of the best Green Ranger figures on the market. I highly I highly recommend getting this guy if you can actually find it. And of course, number three position we have in front of me here, the quarter inch scale Blackest Night power batteries that came out in 2011. These ran for about nine consecutive months. Sometimes one battery would come out, sometimes three batteries would come out. But I have the entire seven core here of the Blackest Night quarter inch scale power batteries. I'm missing two power batteries in this list here that you see in front of me. I'm missing the black one here and the white one here. I didn't want those two power batteries. I wanted the traditional seven power batteries that came out. Again, this was from DC Direct back then now DC collectibles. And I did a full review on every single one of these items, which is the link at the bottom of this particular video. And if you want to see kind of what they look like, I'll grab the blue one here so you can see what it'll look like. It basically comes in multiple pieces. You have the actual power battery, you have the base here, you have a key as well. So the key fits into the bottom here. It says hope on the back of this one. Each one of the power batteries had the name of that core, the symbolism for that core. This one of course was hope. We had of course, we had rage, we had avarice, we had fear, will, hope, you had the indigo tribe, which was compassion, and you have love for the uh, star sapphires. But the gimmick for these things, they're actually functional. These actually work. The power battery itself, just simply you twist it here, and it lights up. It has a light up gimmick here. The handle is functional, at least on this one. My orange lantern, my avarice battery is broken, unfortunately. The handle does not move, but it does light up. There is a light up gimmick here, so you, you see it light up there. The actual cool thing here, the rings here is one size fit all. These rings do light up as well. You take the key, which is sort of slotted, and you simply just take it and just turn the ring like this. This one may be a dead battery. Oh, there it goes, right there, just flashed on here. You see it right there, flashing. So it does work. These batteries probably need to be changed because they're so old. This is getting 2011 when this product came out. These things are extremely, extremely rare and extremely hard to find. Again, not because of price they went on this list, but because of nostalgia. When I picked these pieces up in 2011 during Jeff Johns has run for Blackest Night. This came out, uh, the Blackest Night came out before these lanterns were actually released. These are extremely, extremely valuable and extremely hard to find. If you're a big Green Lantern fan, I highly recommend picking these guys up if you can actually find them for a good price. Again, they're extremely expensive, but I highly, highly recommend the quarter inch scale Blackest Night power batteries. In the number two position, I had to go with another Funko product, a very important and near and dear Funko product to my heart. It's actually what got me into Funko. I've talked about it in my anniversary video, my one year anniversary, I had to go with these guys. That's right, it's the Big Bang Theory Funko Pops. Unfortunately, when I started collecting Funko Pops, these four guys that you see here is the reason I got into Funko. I saw them and I was a big fan of Big Bang Theory and I wanted these items. The big downside, unfortunately, is I threw up their boxes. At that time, I didn't care about the boxes. I didn't really care. I just wanted the cool Funko Pops. That's the reason why I got these guys, because I loved the show and I wanted to get these guys. These are really hard to get at now, guys. These are vaulted items, meaning these have been discontinued, taken off the shelves, never to be reprint reprinted again. That's what vaulted means. In case you see someone says vaulted to you in the Funko community, that's what it means. The item's been discontinued. Usually when an item goes vaulted, it usually increases the item exponentially in value and collectability. That's the reason why they're in this particular list. That's why they're the best of the best for my Funko collection because these are the guys that broke me into Funko and I absolutely love the Big Bang Theory Funko Pops. We're down to the last item, guys. If this wasn't given to me as a gift from a very, very near and dear person in my heart, my girlfriend, the actual Funko Pops would have made number one. I was jockeying back and forth between the Funko item and this particular item for a while. I couldn't make a decision, but this one actually edges it out because again, I got this as a birthday present for my girlfriend for my 43rd birthday. If you haven't figured it out yet, if you watch my channel for a while, you have to know it's the actual Hal Jordan Sideshow Collectible Premium Format figure. 
We actually saw this statue, me and my girlfriend saw this on the Big Bang Theory in Stewart's shop. I always pointed this particular statue out to her. I thought it was such a dynamite, cool, cool statue for Hal Jordan. A very heroic pose with the actual green construct fist, which is the exclusive piece that made this statue even more valuable. And it's on this list not necessarily for monetary reasons. It's an extremely, extremely rare and expensive statue. I've seen this statue in comic book stores going for $600 US. Online, I've seen it between $900 and $1,300 in the, actual, in the actual condition you see here. In such a great condition, there is no problems with this statue. It is a dynamite statue and again what makes it exclusive is this green construct fist. The normal version of the actual statue if you didn't get the actual premium premium version of it is just a white fist here and of course the big thing that makes this statue really cool is the light up gimmick. The entire bottom of the base turns green, it lights up in emerald color and the actual fist glows as well. That would actually sold me on this being the number one item in the Rookie Goodness 2017 collectible item number one position. I hope you like this review. I'm probably going to do one of these every single year now. That, Of course, things might shift in the actual list, but for as far as 2017 goes, this is my definitive list of all collectibles in my personal collection for 2017. And I hope you like this video. Definitely click subscribe, which is a picture of my face at the bottom here. If you click the subscribe button, you'll see a little widget. You click the little bell. You'll be notified of all my newest videos as soon as they come out. And speaking of my videos, you can click them right here to watch more of my content. Hope you have a happy holidays, guys. Take Take care and bye-bye.